coming up to the Little Prince, right? And this is um, written by Antoine de Saint Exupery. So this is Saint Exupery, and it was written in 1943. And we're reading about how the adults are just stupid. Children understand what's going on; they understand what's important about life. But when it comes to matters of consequence, which the adults pretend they have a monopoly on, they actually don't know anything about it. And um, and it's kind of it's kind of sad, but it's true. Okay, so the little prince hops off the asteroid, and he goes uh, to asteroids 325, 326, 327, 328, 329, and 330. Right, so six different asteroids he comes, uh, he visits, and then before he gets to Earth, the first of the asteroid was inhabited by a king. Right, and this king is clad in royal purple and ermine. He was seated upon a throne, which was at the same time both simple and majestic. Ah, here is a subject, exclaimed the king when he saw the little prince coming. And the little prince asked himself, how could he recognize me when he had never seen me? He did not know how the world is simplified for kings. To kings, all the people are subjects to rule over. Approach so that I may see you better, said the king, who felt consumingly proud of being at last a king over somebody. Right? So this guy's a king. He's got all the king stuff. Right? He's got the throne and the robes. and uh, uh, But there's nobody else on the planet. So eventually the little prince comes. He's happy that he finally has somebody to rule over. When he's sitting there talking, the little prince is tired, so he yawns. And then the uh, king is pissed off, and he goes, It is contrary to etiquette to yawn in the presence of a king, the monarch told him. And he's an absolute monarch, right? And he said, I forbid you to do so. I forbid you to yawn. All right, so this is just going to be like Kristen Harris, basically. You, you know, you, 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 she wants to rule over people, and therefore, if they have to do something, then, you know, then, okay, I'll permit you to do it, right? So that's what he said. He was like, I can't help it. I can't help myself. It's been a long journey, and I've had, uh, long journey and I've had no sleep. Ah, then, the king said, then I order you to yawn. It is years since I had anyone uh, seen anyone yawn, and yawns to me are objects of curiosity. Come now, yawn again. It is in order. <laughs> Right, so therefore I told you what to do. That frightens me. I cannot anymore, murmured the little prince, now completely abashed. Hum, hum, replied the king. Then then I order you to sometimes to yawn and sometimes to... <laughs> he sputtered a little and seemed vexed. You know, basically he was doing what he wanted to do, but uh, he was like, I command over you. And I hate I, I I think these people are fascist. You know, basically they feel like they could order over somebody, and then uh, the way Kristen Harris is is you better listen to me or else I'll fuck you up. And that's not that, that she doesn't uh, inspire curiosity. She doesn't respect the person's individuality, their sovereignty, um, their own inner you know their spirituality, their morality. She just wants blind obedience, and actually that's a lot of the education system, just blind obedience to the fascist, the totalitarian, uh, autocratic, dictatorial fascist. So, carrying on, um, let's see, he tolerated no disobedience, so he didn't know what, what to really do, and he was talking about how his orders have to make sense, because it, he can't order a general to turn into a bird, because that wasn't make sense, and that would be the fault of the king. So then, the little prince said, well, may I sit down? And the king said, I order you to do so, and uh, majestically gathered in a fold of his ermine mantle, right? So he's, may I sit down? I order you to do so, because I'm the king. Yes, sit down right now. Uh, but the little prince was wondering. The planet was tiny over what could this king really rule. Sire, he asked him, I beg that you will excuse my asking you a question. I order you to ask a question. The king hastened to assure him. Sire, over what do you rule? Over everything, said the king with magnificent simplicity. Over everything, the king made a gesture which took in his planet the other planets and all the stars. Over all that... Asked the prince, over all that, the king answered, for his rule was not only absolute, it was also universal. The stars obey you? Certainly they do. They obey instantly. I do not permit insubordination. And then he's, he likes sunsets. The little prince loves sunsets. And he's like, order the sun to set for me. And he's like, well, you know, that would be unreasonable. I can't really do that. So, you know, how, how uh, uh, convenient of this. Uh, king to be able to order things that are allowed to be ordered and not to be ordering anything else. It really has no power whatsoever. Eventually, the little prince gets tired of this and he says, "I shall set out, uh, shall set out on my way again." Do not go," said the king. "Do not go. I will make you a minister. A minister of what? A minister of justice." 
but there's nobody here to judge. Oh, we don't know that. I have not yet made a complete tour of my kingdom. I'm very old. There's no room here for a carriage, and it tires me to walk. The little prince says, oh, but I've already looked already, and there's nobody. And then the king says, well, then you shall judge yourself. That is the hardest thing to do, to be able to judge oneself. If you succeed in judging yourself rightly, then you're indeed a man of true wisdom. Yes, said the little prince, but I can judge myself anywhere. I do not need to live on this planet. Hum, hum, said the king. I have good reasons to believe that there is an old rat, so you could condemn him to death, and then you could spare his life. And then the little prince says, I don't want to condemn anybody to death. Um, and so then he's like, you know, I think that I'm going to actually leave. And the king said, no. But the little prince, having now completed his preparations for departure, had no wish to gr grieve the old monarch. If your majesty wishes to be promptly obeyed, he said, he should give, uh, be able to give me a reasonable order. He should be able to, for example, carry on with the little prince. So, uh, he's uh, visiting this asteroid, the little prince is, of a king, and the king is sitting there saying, do this and do that, and even though, like, he yawns, and he says, don't yawn, you're being disobedient, and then he's like, I can't help, and he's like, well, then, then I order you to yawn, and he's like, well, I can't do that either, and he's like, well, sometimes I order you, you to yawn, and then sometimes I don't, right? Ooh, look at that part, okay, so, we have um, the little prince who's um, visiting all these different asteroids, and he's talking to this king, and the king is, um, he wants to leave, right? He wants to leave, and yet the uh, king won't let him. And so, uh, first the king says, I'll make you a minister, and he's like, a minister of what? And he's like, oh, give me a fucking break. And then, um, eventually, the little prince is like, well... I'm going to leave. And then the king says, no. And the little prince is like, well, I'm pretty much going to go. He says, if your majesty wishes to be promptly obeyed, he said, he should be able to give me a reasonable order. He should be able, for example, to order me to be gone by the end of one minute. It seems to me that conditions are favorable. As the king made no answer, the little prince hesitated a moment. Then with a sigh, he took his leave. I make you my ambassador, the king said uh, hastily. He had a magnificent air of authority. Grown-ups are very strange, the little prince said to himself as he continued on his journey. The second planet was inhabited by a conceited man. Ah, I am about to receive a visit from an admirer, he exclaimed from afar when he first saw the little prince coming. For to conceited men, all other men are admirers. Good morning, said the little prince. That is a queer hat you are wearing. It is a hat for salutes. <laughs> now, that's pretty, it's kind of a funny picture because it's like, Ah, I see I have an admirer. An admirer has come to my planet to admire me. So a conceited man, right? You have a fucking fascist dickhead who wants to order everybody around. You got um, an admirer or uh, a conceited man who wants everyone to admire him with a goofy face and a goofy hat. Right? And then um, he doesn't understand him. He's asking all these different questions. And it's like, what's admire mean? It's like, well, to admire means that you regard me as the handsomest, best dressed, the richest, and the most intelligent man on this planet. But you are the only man on your planet. Do me this kindness. Admire me just the same. I admire you, said the little prince, shrugging his shoulders slightly. But what is there in that to interest you so much? And the little prince went away. The grown-ups are certainly very odd, he said to himself, as he continued on his journey. Then the next person that he meets is the tippler. So it's his, it's his drunk. And the drunk has circular reasoning, but we're going to find out that the businessman has got circular reasoning too. So the tippler is like, what are you doing here? He said to the tippler, who he found settled down in silence before a collection of empty bottles and also a collection of full bottles. Which, I, how the, how is he getting in these? Uh, how they survive actually on an asteroid? Um, and how did he get all these beer bottles? Anyways. The, uh, the tippler, the drunk, right? He says, I'm drinking, replied the tippler with a lugubrious air. Why are you drinking, demanded the little prince. So that I may forget, replied the tippler. Forget what, inquired the little prince, who already was sorry for him. Forget that I am ashamed, the tippler confessed, hanging his head. Ashamed of what, insisted the little prince, who wanted to help him. Ashamed of drinking, the tippler brought his speech to an end and shut himself up in impregnable silence. And the little prince went away puzzled. The grown-ups are very, or certainly very, very odd, he said to himself. Then there's the businessman who just keeps on counting. Eventually he says, 500 million something. And um, he didn't want to stop. And he's like, oh, you're going to mess up my calculations. And he's like, well, what are you actually counting? And he goes, well, you know, there's little dots. He didn't even know what they were called. And he's like, oh, you mean the stars? And yeah, the stars. 
well, what are you going to do with 500 million stars? And he corrected them. It's actually 501 million 600 22,731. I am concerned with matters of consequence. I am accurate. Right? So again, you got a fucking adult that's all fucking full of himself. It's a businessman, right? He's counting all the stars. And he's going to eventually say he owns the stars. So you got a drunk. You got a king. Right? You got a fascist piece of shit. You got a drunk waste of life. And then you got this businessman who um, sort of like the king but a little bit different. So let's check it out. What are you, you going to do with these stars? What do I do with them? Yes. Nothing. I own them. You own the stars? Yes. But I've already seen a king who, ah, kings do not own. They reign over. It's a very different matter. And what good does it do you to own the stars? Oh, it does me good of making me rich. What good does it do you to be rich? Well, it makes it possible for me to buy more stars if they're discovered. <laughs> And he's like, oh, he reasons like the Templar, right? He owns the stars to make money. He makes money to buy more stars. So this little man, the little prince, said to himself, reasons like my poor Templar. Nevertheless, he still had more questions. How is it possible for one to own the stars? To whom do they belong, the businessman retorted peevishly. I don't know. To nobody. Then they belong to me because I was the first person to think of it. Is that all that is necessary? Well, certainly you find a diamond that belongs to nobody, it's yours. When you discover an island uh, island that belongs to nobody, it is yours. When you get an idea before anyone else, you take out a patent on it. It is yours. So with me, I own the stars because nobody else before me ever thought of owning them. Um, he kind of has more conversation. Eventually, the prince sort of understands what he's trying to say. He's like, well, I myself, I myself own a flower. He continued his conversation with the businessman, which I water every day. I own three volcanoes, which I clean out every week, for I also clean out the one that is extinct. One never knows. It is some use to my volcanoes, and it is some use to my flower that I own them. But you are of no use to the stars. The businessman opened his mouth, but he found nothing to say in return, and the little prince went away. The grown-ups are certainly altogether extraordinary, he said, simply talking to himself as he continued on his journey. So the fifth planet, uh, asteroid, whatever, I guess they're planets for a little prince, it was very strange. It was the smallest of all. There was just enough room on it for a street lamp and a lamp lighter. The little prince was not able to reach any explanation of the use of the street lamp and a lamp lighter somewhere in the heavens on a planet which had no people and not one house. <laughs> but he said to himself, nevertheless, it may well be that this man is absurd. But he's not so absurd as the king, the conceited man, the businessman, and the tippler. Oh yeah, the conceited man, right? I am better than everybody. Admire me. Look at me. I am the greatest. Uh, for at least his work has some meaning. When he lights his street lamp, it is as if he brought one more star to life or one flower. When he puts out his lamp, he sends the flower or the star to sleep. That is a beautiful occupation. And since it is beautiful, it is truly useful. When he arrived on the planet, he respectfully saluted the lamp lighter. Good morning. Why have you just put out your lamp? Those are the orders, replied the lamp lighter. Good morning. What are the orders? The orders that I put out my lamp. Good evening. He lighted his lamp again. Why would you just light again? Those are the orders, replied the lamp lighter. I do not understand, said the little prince. There is nothing to understand, said the lamp lighter. Orders are orders. Good morning. And he put out his lamp. And he mopped his forehead with a handkerchief decorated with red squares. I follow a terrible profession. In the old days, it was reasonable. I put the lamp out in the morning. In the evening, I lighted it again. I lighted it again. Uh, and then I had the rest of the day for relaxation and the rest of the night for sleep. And the orders have changed since that time? The orders have not changed, said the lamplighter. That's the tragedy. From year to year, the planet has turned more rapidly and the orders have not been changed. Then what? asked the prince. Well, the planet now makes a complete turn every minute and I no longer have a single second for repose. Once every minute, I have to light my lamp and put it out. That is very funny. A day lasts only one minute here where you live. It is not funny at all, said the lamplighter. While we have been talking together, a month has gone by. A month? Yes, a month. 30 minutes, 30 days. Good evening. He lied the lamp again. <laughs> uh, so even though he says that he was the only one that didn't seem ridiculous because he actually had, you know, used to something else, the lamp needed him. But then he had to leave again. Um, but he did feel sorry that he had to leave this planet because the planet had, uh, it was blessed every day with 1,440 sunsets. So the sixth planet was ten times longer than the last one. It was inhabited by an old gentleman who wrote voluminous books. Oh, look, here's an explorer, he ex 
exclaimed to himself when he saw the little prince coming. The little prince sat down on the table and panted a little. He had already traveled so much and so far. Where do you come from? The old gentleman said to him. What is that big book? said the little prince. What are you doing? I'm a geographer, said the old gentleman. What is a geographer? A geographer is a scholar who knows the location of all the seas, rivers, towns, mountains, and deserts. Um, and he kind of goes on and says this, and he says... <laughs> Um, he's talking about how important he is because things, you know, he marks a mountain and a mountain always stays the same, so that's a matter of importance. 